Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, in today's lecture, I'm going to tell you how you can multiply two n bit numbers in linear time. So, even faster than it's written here. Uh, of course, uh, the exact running time for it depends on the model of computation. And that's something we talked about last time, so we'll get into it again this time. Uh, so, actually, this topic that's going to occupy us for the lecture, fast multiplication, it's not like the most important topic in the world, and like, I don't inherently think it needs a whole lecture. But it's a great topic for hanging uh, several other subtopics on that I do care about, including um, thinking a little bit more about computational models, thinking about uh, the complexity of basic arithmetic operations, uh, and uh, arithmetic on really large numbers, uh, especially Fourier transforms will come up in this lecture. And that'll play a major role in uh, our next two lectures on um, analysis of Boolean functions and quantum computation. So it's somehow it's like one interesting topic that connects a bunch of things together. And so I think it makes a suitable uh, thing to talk about today. Uh, OK. So as I said, we're going to be talking uh, in this lecture about you know, the time complexity to multiply two numbers together, two integers, n-bit integers. But before we get there, let's actually even warm up a little bit and ask ourselves this question. Uh, what is the time complexity needed? to add to n-bit integers. OK, I guess I mean natural numbers here, uh, positive, uh, not negative numbers. And uh, recall, you know, now that we're talking about algorithms, we're going to be working in the WordRam model like we studied last time. And we're also going to just make the assumption that the word size is proportional to log n, which is sort of the standard assumption to make. And <clears throat> here, the mental picture you should have in your head is that maybe n is uh, 10,000 or 100,000. OK, so imagine these two numbers are presented to you in two like files that are like, I don't know, 12 and a half kilobytes each. OK, and you have to make another file that contains the, the I don't know, 13 kilobyte answer of the sum of these two numbers. Uh, so, you know, in the WordRam model, if you have an integer that's between, you know, 1 and n, or 1 and n squared, you can fit it into like one word, and, or a couple words, and then by definition, you could just add those two numbers in constant time. But we don't have a number between 1 and n, we have like an n bit number, right? So if this is 100,000, it's storing a number between, you know, basically 1 and 2 to the power of 100,000. Now, you might actually ask, like, why would you ever want to do that? Like, what conceivable situation can you imagine where you'd want to add, like, 200 bit or 100,000 bit numbers together? And it's a reasonable question because, you know, 2 to the power of 100,000 does not represent any physical quantity, right? It's way bigger. So it's not like you care about these numbers, like, in their role as counting things. Uh, but uh, the reason that you would ever want to do this or to multiply to 10,000 bit integers, or uh, I don't know, take the greatest common divisor of two 10,000 bit integers, is for cryptography. So the one um, use of manipulating ridiculously long numbers is uh, in cryptography. Yeah, I'm sure you've seen before, like RSA, you know, the, on which most of encryption is based, it involves picking these, you know, 2,000 bit keys and multiplying them and factoring them and so forth. So uh, this is the mindset to uh, be in for this discussion. Uh, I suppose besides the cryptography aspect, there's just the inherent, I mean, you know, it's addition. We may as well try to understand the exact complexity of it and multiplication and so forth. But just bear in mind that these are more like, almost like string manipulation problems than they are like actual arithmetic problems. Uh, OK, well, I mean, there's basically only real one way to algorithm for adding numbers, right? You just do it the way you learned to do it in school. The number somehow looks like this. And the second number looks like this. I don't know. OK, those are the two inputs. Let's say they're both n bits long for simplicity, the same length. Then, OK, you process them simultaneously from right to left. And you do 1 plus 0 is 1, and 0 plus 1 is 1. And this is 0, and there's a carry. And then this is 0, and there's a carry, and so forth. OK, and you get the answer. And that's pretty clearly order and time. Now, what I want to tell you, actually, is that uh, you can almost do this problem in better time. You can almost sort of do this in n over log n time. 
Anybody have like a clue what I'm getting at here? Yes? Yeah, that's right. Uh, <clears throat> the point is, yeah, in the Wurmgram model, you can do like basic arithmetic operations in like, you know, one time step. So like, let me put a question mark here. Like if you, you like repackaged these n bits, repackaged n bits into n over log n words, you know, each of length log n. Uh, then you could add them in this order n over log n time. And let's assume the word length is exactly like log base 2 of n, um, in which case, like, you know, packaging log n bits together is really no more than just writing the number in base n. Right? So, I mean, here the numbers are assumed to be written in base 2, but if, you know, hypothetically log n were 4, then you'd be like putting these together and these together, and you'd be like, oh, this is actually the digit 6, and this is actually the digit 1, 2, 4, 8, 13. Okay, and you'd just be doing the same old addition algorithm, but like on quote unquote digits, which would actually be, you know, numbers between 1 and n, or 0 and n minus 1. But, you know, you can add two numbers that fit into a word in time one in this model, and you can get the carry and so forth. Yeah? So don't we run some weirdness that number log n is strictly shorter than output? Uh, yeah, well, so the reason that uh, if you really have, you know, if the input is like two arrays, each array element storing a bit and the arrays of length n, then there's nothing you can do to beat like order n time. You have to look at the whole input, and this like repackaging takes you order n time. Uh, but if somebody, you know, someone like uh, helpfully already did that step for you and took this like n bit long number or this number between these two numbers between zero and two to the n, and presented them to you as n over log n digit numbers, each digit being like in a word, then you could do it at n over log n time. Okay, so this is like this kind of like things is sometimes like you know called like bit tricks, and like sometimes in like the word brand model you can save factors of like log n by doing neat tricks like this. Um, yeah. Any question about this? Okay. So uh, I bring this up because it's gonna this same little trick is gonna arise in the problem of multiplication, which is like the more interesting uh, task. Okay. Great, so now we'll move on to the question of the day, which is, what's the time to multiply to n bit numbers? Okay, and again, still imagine that these, you know, n is like 100,000 or something. And uh, based on this trick, you may as well like, apply the same trick uh, for integer multiplication. So whatever your future algorithm is going to be, you pretty much, without loss of generality, as step zero, may as well repackage these numbers <coughs> into um, you know, n over log n, you know, quote unquote digit uh, numbers each digit fitting in a word. Okay, these digits are between, uh, you know, 0 and n minus 1. I'm assuming the word length is like, let's say, exactly log base 2 of n. Uh, and this repackaging step is going to take you order n time. And that's going to be uh, fine, because I assure you we're not going to try to multiply and bit number is faster than order n time. So we're willing to pay this for sure. And so we may as well just do it. And also, for the rest of the lecture, I'm going to, this is psychologically difficult, but I'm going to write capital N for n over log n. It's, it's painful because capital N suggests that it's bigger than little n, but it's actually smaller than little n. But allow me to do it. Uh, OK, <clears throat> so that's our task. Imagine you have two capital N digit, capital N digit numbers. And uh, these numbers are written in base n, so each digit is between, base little n, so each digit is between uh, 0 and little n. Or anyway, it fits in a word, each digit. How are you going to multiply them? So again, you can still do the 
the algorithm you learned in school, if the number of digits is three, you can be like, okay, 751 times 314. You know this algorithm, right? Four, zero, there's a carry, 30, whatever. Seven. Anyway, you multiply them, and then you do some adds, and you get the answer here. Okay, so that's fine. If these are capital N uh, digit numbers, then this algorithm, the grade school algorithm, takes something like quadratic time. Well, in fact, quadratic time. Um, okay, because basically this tableau of digits down here is something like capital N by capital N, and filling each digit takes constant time because you can do all these um, arithmetic operations in time one. <laughs> Actually, let's say that's assuming your word RAM has the multiplication instruction. Remember, we discussed this point last time. We definitely wanted to allow ourselves to like add two words and like compare two words and cost the time. And we th said, well, what about multiplying two words? It's sort of it's up to you whether or not you want to allow it. So let's just say we allow it so that we can multiply two digits in like constant time. Then this then this will really be exactly like theta of capital N squared time. I mean, you also have to do the additions here, and there's some carrying, but this is also uh, quadratic time. Does that make sense? Any questions about the model issues? OK. Uh, great. Now, you may already know that this is not the fastest algorithm at all for multiplication. There are like clever algorithms for multiplying two really long numbers. Uh, for example, you may have seen like Karatsuba's algorithm, or maybe not, but this is some kind of like divide and conquer method. Uh, it involves like splitting the two n digit numbers into halves. And somehow you need to do four multiplications, but if you're clever, you can do it with only three. And you get a recursive algorithm that gets this down to like theta of n to the, it's like log base two of three, I think. This is Karatsuba. OK, that's like 1.58 or something in the exponent there. And there's generalizations of this that are faster and faster. And if you take more and more generalizations, you can actually get algorithms that run in, for multiplication, that run in nearly linear time. And uh, rather than you know, exploring those, I'll sort of just jump to the, the, end, the end of the story and uh, tell you the ultimate divide and conquer algorithm for multiplying two long, many digit integers. And it's uh, to use the discrete Fourier transform method. Okay, so this will give us the opportunity to talk about uh, Fourier transforms as well. Uh, I guess that's DFT. And what we'll see is actually that uh, basically this discrete Fourier transform method for multiplying capital N bit integers lets you multiply them in an amount of time which is essentially not more than the amount of time it takes to do one discrete Fourier transform. Okay, and so then it becomes a question of like how fast can you do a discrete Fourier transform? And as we'll see, it's pretty fast. So uh, this idea was um, figured out by Strassen in 1968 and then developed further by Schoenhager and Strassen in 71 and Pollard in 71 this reduction of multiplication to discrete Fourier transforms. And then actually um, Gauss in 1805 came up with a really fast algorithm for uh, doing this discrete Fourier transform uh, on length n vectors. Uh, he showed how to do it uh, in order n log n arithmetic operations. Which is pretty cool. I guess he was trying to like calculate something about the orbit of Juno, which I guess is a moon of some planet. And he's literally doing these calculations by hand. And he's like, man, I, I really wish I could speed this up from n squared steps to n log n steps. And he did. <clears throat> this is usually credited to like Cooley and Tukey from 1965. But then like some historian discovered that like Gauss had figured it out in 1805. Actually, before he had invented Fourier transforms. Not exactly sure how that works. But anyway, he figured out this algorithm. Uh, back then. And this fast algorithm is called, this board is really a mess, but uh, it's called the fast Fourier transform. 
FFT. Okay, so the thing that you're trying to do is the discrete Fourier transform. The specific algorithm that does it quickly in this n log n many operations is called the fast Fourier transform. And uh, Gilbert Strang in 94 called it the most important numerical algorithm of our lifetime. So I guess it's good that we get to see it. Uh, great, so um, that's good. Now I put in like a bit of a weasel word here. Uh, I said that uh, Gauss's fast Fourier transform shows how to do the discrete Fourier transform in order n log n arithmetic operations. But I did not actually say time because, uh, <clears throat> well, as you'll see, these arithmetic operations are, it's a little bit, uh, they're not arithmetic operations that are natively supported by the word RAM model, okay? Although they look pretty simple, uh, <clears throat> as, you'll, as you'll see. So uh, a question becomes, well, what if you actually want to do these arithmetic operations on like the official word RAM model? Uh, <clears throat> how long does it take? And uh, Knuth, in like maybe early 70s, uh, showed that this fast Fourier transform can actually be done in order and log n time on the word RAM model. If you allow multiplication, which sounds funny, but it, it makes sense. Uh, but what I mean is you allow multiplication of two words in order one time. Which again, as I said last time, whether or not you allow this is up to your own taste. And um, I like to allow it. Why not? I mean, it's not an AC0, but you know, our modern chips like have this multiplication instruction for two words. So maybe it's a reasonable model. So we figured out how you can actually do these uh, arithmetic operations with sufficient precision and so forth that you actually get order n log n time on the word RAM model. <clears throat> and therefore, I mean, putting it all together, this reduction from, as I mentioned, this reduction from multiplying capital N bit integers to doing like one, uh, well, actually two, uh, discrete Fourier transforms, which we now know, thanks to Gauss and Knuth, can be done in n log n time. You put it all together, and you get, and also you put step zero together, and you deduce that the time to multiply uh, n bit integers, two n bit integers, on this word RAM model, which is a sort of standard model, is, well, we just plug in the capital N is n over log n, n over log n, times log of n over log n. Okay, log of n over log n is like log n, so the log n's cancel, and this is order n. <coughs> Which is great, pretty awesome. Linear time. Couldn't really hope for better than that. And <coughs> somehow this is like a lesser known fact. I don't know why. I think it's because people don't admit they're using the word RAM model or something. Uh, so you don't often see this fact like, Cited, but it's true. It's like right there in the art of computer programming, like volume two, uh, you know, section 4.3.3.c from like the 70s. Um, but yeah, I guess like people were somehow, uh, I don't know, worried about models or something. So people have also studied like, oh, well, what if you want to do integer, this integer multiplication uh, on like circuits or like two tape Turing machines? Circuits I can kind of understand. Two tape Turing machines seems a little sicko to me, but um, so they studied it, and uh, there's a great progression of results. So in 1971, Schoenhagen and Strassen showed how to do it in n log n uh, log log n time, and this was like a very famous algorithm. And usually you see people talk about the schoenhagen strassen algorithm for multiplication and say it runs in this time. <clears throat> really, this thing is the Schoenhaga Strassen multiplication algorithm, just taking advantage of the fact that you have this word RAM trick. And then people were very excited in 2007 when Fuhrer got it down to n times log n times 2 to the order log star n, which is some like comically slow-growing function. 
I guess it's the number of times you need to do log to a number to get it down to two. And then, hey, in 2014, in this paper, Harvey and Vanderhoven just got it down to order n log n. Which people pretty much believe is the fastest you can do it in like circuit model or two-tape Turing machine model. It seems like you can't really get rid of this log n. And it's sort of all like, I don't know, kind of makes sense. Like in this model, it's n log n. And if you go to the word random model with multiplications allowed, where you can package things into n bit chunks and like manipulate, sorry, log n bit chunks and manipulate them. Morally, it sort of stands to reason you can get rid of this log n factor, and in, indeed you can. <clears throat> Questions about this? Okay, so uh, why, before we get into it, and I will get into it, uh, how to do it soon, you might ask, like, why obsess so much about um, <coughs> Integer multiplication, you know, it's just one, it's just one problem. Uh, one reason is that, like, the best known running time for pretty much every arithmetic uh, problem is like a direct function of the time for multiplication. Like, almost every arithmetic problem, uh, somehow the best algorithms re just reduce to multiplication. And so back in these days when, like, they weren't really sure, like, what should be the best running time for uh, integer multiplication, they would just call it something like m of n and say, like, here's my running time for like division or, uh, I don't know, exponentiation or whatever. <coughs> so I'll, I'll just tell you quickly a few of these results. They all appear in this great book by Brenton Zimmerman, actually on like the back cover or back page or something. Um, so let, let uh, m of n be time for multiplication. OK, so that's just m of n stands for order n if you're in the word ram model, or order n log n if you're in circuits or Turing machine model. And here, the following facts are known. You can do integer division in time order m of n. And it's not trivial. Uh, if you want to compute like x divided by y, reduces to computing 1 over y and then doing a multiplication with x. And you compute 1 over y by Newton's method, where you like solve the equation like yz equals 1 by Newton's method. And it's somewhat sophisticated, this reduction, but it exists. And uh, in fact, it was the, this reduction that's like the source of the Pentium bug from whatever, 30 years ago. Uh, there's some like mistake in like the lookup table for like where you should start your Newton's method when you're doing integer division. Uh, okay, you can also do uh, kth roots, so square roots, cube roots, etc., all in uh, order m of n time. <coughs> Again, with Newton's method. Um, you can do modular exponentiation to kth power. So if you, of course you cannot do like exponentiation, exponentiation like a to the power of b in polynomial time at all because the answer is too large to fit a, in like a polynomial number, amount of space. But if you do like a to the power of b mod 2 to the w, or mod any number actually, to keep the answer size small, then I'm sure you know you can do that efficiently. And this takes time order k times m of n. Okay, this will be important in um, Shor's quantum factoring algorithm. Uh, you can do GCD in time order m of n times log n. Uh, this does not use Euclid's algorithm. Euclid's algorithm is quadratic time. Uh, and Knuth was the first person to get like a near linear time algorithm for GCD, which is totally different from Euclid's algorithm. Uh, and, and improved version on it gives this. Uh, let me not write all of them, but you can like convert numbers between two bases in like order m n times log n time. Uh, you can compute like ln or x or sine or cos or whatever of a number in uh, also order m of n times log n time. Here the idea is imagine you're computing on like sign of an integer that's in one word, and what you want is like n bits of precision in your real number answer. Yes? Yeah, so here, like imagine uh, 
maybe it's like more complicated for here, but like uh, take the sine function, right? Imagine just applying sine to an integer, <coughs> which is stored in, uh, I don't know, like uh, a word, say, like computing sine of one. Uh, and your task is to produce n bits of the output. Uh, so what's like so for example similar to this is like if you want to compute like n digits of pi or n digits of e it's also m of n times log n and yeah these things all use like something sophisticated called the AMGM iteration method which I don't know what it is but it sounds great and last one I'll mention is a uh, primality testing you can test if an n digit number is prime in uh, order m of n times n time. That's a randomized algorithm, though. So that's uh, like quadratic time. There's a deterministic algorithm for primality testing, but it runs in some like disgusting time, like O tilde of n to the sixth or something. <laughs> Do you have a question? Yes. Uh, when you write exp, you exponential? Yeah, I guess here. I'm not exactly sure what I mean. I have to look it up. But I mean, I guess this is probably like, you have to be careful here, right? Because this could be like a huge quantity. Yeah. It's probably like maybe you have like a rational number that's like n bits long. N, rational number, let's say, I don't know. I'm making this up a little bit. But I can imagine it's something like you have a rational number between 1 and 2 expressed as a fraction where the, integer, the numerator and denominator are n bit integers. And you want to get like n bit precision of the uh, output. Something like this. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure I admit what I mean by this, but you can check out this book. But basically computing uh, any of these like analytic functions, like n bits of precision on an input is apparently this time. Yeah? Uh, 